MITRE Ingenuity's Center for Threat Informed Defense is excited to publicly announce one of our first major initiatives. The goal is to advance threat informed defense against ever evolving cyber threats by utilizing the experience and expertise of both the MITRE Corporation and the private sector. In pursuit of that goal, one of the first major CTID initiatives is the establishment of an independent, structured library of adversary emulation plans. This library will enable any team or organization to easily assess their own cybersecurity environments using emulation plans and then utilize the results of those assessments to prioritize investments to improve their organization's cybersecurity posture. Today, we're excited to announce both the library and the first emulation plan to be part of that library, the FIN6 emulation plan. The first component of the emulation plan is our intelligence summary, which outlines 15 publicly available sources to describe FIN6, their motivations, objectives, and their observed target industries. FIN6 is overall thought to be a financially motivated crime group that's aggressively targeted and compromised high volume point of sale systems in the hospitality and retail sectors since at least 2015. The Intel summary further describes the typical FIN6 operation along with their publicly attributed tactics, techniques, and procedures or TTPs, as well as their most often used software, map to MITRE attack. Here you see the linkages between the narrative description of their operations and the clear link to MITRE attack using the sub-techniques approach. Here as we move further, you see specific detail regarding the softwares that they've been known to use, and you see notably a variety of commodity malware, Cobalt Strike, Metasploit, Mimikatz, and others, as well as ransomware and other tool sets. Within the emulation plan, we provide attack navigator layers to visually map the TTPs that we describe to the attack framework. The nuance to our approach here is that we want to be clear in associating only the core TTPs visually to the attack framework with FIN6 that are truly FIN6 unique behaviors as contrasted with behaviors or TTPs that are truly associated with the tool set, not the actor. And here at the end of the intelligence summary, you see our list of references. These are all the 15 sources of publicly available cyber threat intelligence used in the development of this intelligence summary um, and the intelligence summary then serving as the foundation for the latter portions of the emulation plan. The main FIN6 emulation plan is a human readable step-by-step -step implementation of FIN6 TTPs. For this specific emulation plan, we've broken it into two halves, phase one and phase two, mirroring the typical FIN6 operations flow. The emulation plan includes an overview of each phase, an administrative section describing prerequisites, including tool sets required, supporting infrastructure, etc., and then the emulation plan itself for that appropriate phase. In addition to the human readable version of the implementation plan, we've also included a machine readable YAML format. This format is designed specifically to be programmatically parsed, read, reformatted, or otherwise ingested into an automated agent such as Caldera or another breach simulation framework. Phase one of the emulation plan describes typical FIN6 initial access, but assumes you begin with initial access to the target. At this point, we'll then begin the specific procedural implementations associated with phase one. The first step, step 2.1, is account discovery. FIN6 has been frequently seen to use add find, so you see that tool used here. Step 2.2 is remote system discovery, and again, FIN6 has been frequently seen to use add find, identifying remote computers within the environment. Step 2.3, domain trust discovery. Step 2.4, Domain Trust Discovery. Step 2.5, Both System and Network Configuration Discovery. And step 2.6, the final step in the overall Step 2, is Permission Groups Discovery, specifically Domain Groups. Step three focuses on the third objective of the typical FIN6 operation, specifically escalation of privileges. 
In this regard, FinSix typically takes a pragmatic approach, purchase credentials, uh, heavy use of credential access, using Git system modules, and other approaches. Step 3.1 uses Meterpreter to execute access token manipulation. Step 3.2 executes OS credential dumping specifically from LSAS memory, again using Meterpreter and Mimikatz. Step 3.3, again OS credential dumping, this time specifically focused on the ntds.dit file. Here again, the emulation plan executes this step using Metasploit. Step 4 of the emulation plan is the final objective of Phase 1, which is specifically collection and exfiltration of all the data collected up until this point. You'll note in the previous steps of the emulation plan that each of the steps exported their findings into a text file. So here in step four, the goal is to collect all of those results into one central file and then exfiltrate them back to our infrastructure. In step 4.1, we utilize 7zip.exe to compress all of the text files into a single archive in preparation for exfiltration. Here in step 4.2, we utilize SSH to exfiltrate that archive back to our infrastructure. Just like phase one before it, phase two begins with an administrative section describing the prerequisites needed prior to moving into the emulation plan itself. The execution phase of phase two is different than phase one in that there are three distinct scenarios available to you as a practitioner. This, these three scenarios are modeled after known FIN6 motivations and objectives in real environments. So as you move into phase two, you pick which scenario you'd like to implement, similar to a choose your own adventure story, and then the emulation plan will walk you through all the requisite steps of that particular scenario. Scenario one begins with step 5.1, lateral movement to the point of sale system using your existing command and control framework. For the purpose of this step, we implement the procedure in Metasploit, specifically uploading the Assistant32 EXE to Windows Temp on the remote system. In step 5.3, we execute the point of sale implant using WIMIC. In step 5.4, we implement persistence. We provide three options for implementing persistence. The first is the addition of a registry run key. The second is via the addition of a scheduled task. And the last is the addition of a new service. Step 6.1 is similar to previous sections in the aspect of initial access. However, it specifically leads to web injection and the compromise of a web server through the modification of JavaScript libraries as seen here in Step 6.2. For organizations interested in emulating FinSix's use of ransomware, the group is believed to typically compromise and configure internal services distribution nodes, primarily using batch files to disable security products and prepare hosts for compromise. Here in step 7.1, we copy the kill script batch file, the distribution script batch file, as well as the actual ransomware binary to the distribution server. Here in step 7.2, we distribute the ransomware and the kill script to the intended targets in the target environment. Finally, in step 7.3, we execute the kill script and the ransomware on target. Tying this work back to what was discussed at the beginning of this video, the FinSix plan is really only the first of many plans that will ultimately populate an adversary emulation library maintained by the Center for Threat Informed Defense. And the overall philosophy and really the impact of this work is that these emulation plans are grounded in known adversary behaviors, validated in available cyber threat intelligence, and ultimately designed to empower teams to execute purple teaming within any organization's environment such that you can evaluate realistically your existing defenses and detections against true adversaries and then prioritize the fixes in your environment based on the adversaries that are the most likely to target your sector. 
We hope that this work is impactful and useful to you and your organization. And we want to invite feedback from any organizations that utilize this plan, uh, both good and bad, so that we can continuously improve over time. Thank you very much. Thank you.